speaking of friends, we, you weren't there, but what was it two days ago? Hmm. It was Monday, Saturday, Jesus. Saturday, we, we went to a friend's um, apartment complex in Irvine. Yeah. And let me tell you, what dude, you guys do? These apartment complexes, so I'm going to get into that, but these complexes are sick. Like, granted, $3,000 is like the lowest price for, for a place if you want to get one, but it has a gym mm -hmm. that is like heaven. Like, it's exactly how I picture a gym with everything like uh, squat racks, anything you want to do with knees over toes guy, sleds, all that. It has a rock climbing center. That's sick. It has an infrared sauna area. Mm -hmm. It has a bowling alley. It has multiple pool tables. Sounds like a university. <laughs> and a poker table. That's pretty cool. Actually, and a, and a golf simu simulator. Okay, see, those two last ones are like an, an additional additive, which is dope. We ended up playing poker, not with real money, because that's haram, mm -hmm. for like an hour and a half. Okay. Did you defeat? I won, bro. No way. I actually won as an amateur. I, hey. won, a, I won a big pile. See, it's the beginner's luck, bro. It's fun, dude. Yeah, man. it's it's pretty fun. I'm just amazed that you can get so many things with, like, these modern-day apartment complexes. Yeah, and it makes you wonder who's running them, you know? The cartel? The Irvine Company. I don't know. Is it soccer moms of Irvine? Probably. Who's running these places? I don't know. Yeah, anyway, but like, I, I just find it funny. I've always made fun of uh, the Irvine company in general, because as you know, <laughs> if you own a house in Irvine, you don't fully own it, right? There's always a percentage that belongs to the Irvine company. Yeah. And I don't know if you can inherit them either. Houses? Yeah. I'm not sure on that. I need to double check on that, but it's not crazy if that's the case. But why? What's so special about the Irvine company? Irvine, is, the it's where... a private city. Or whatever. Like, think of a gated community, but a city. That's Irvine. So, I mean, I would have to assume that commercial buildings that lay there, or whatever, they have some sort of agreement or contract with this company that acts as a city. Yeah, for sure. Or, like, the city has to run it by the Irvine company? You know? So, there's, like, a switch in roles here. Wouldn't it be the, yeah, wouldn't it be the other way around? I don't know how this works, man, but... Basically, um, the Irvine company is just known to like sweep things under the rug just to keep Irvine the safest city or to keep its rates up, you know, mm. the rating. Like what? It's just like, think about this. There was a car accident about six years ago. Uh, the car was filled with like 14, 15, 16 year olds. There's probably like seven people in a five person car. They crashed into like some residential area. All died. Right. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they try to do is to just hide it from the media, like try to take it down, try to do this, wipe it away, whatever. Another thing, right? Um, school sexual abuse, rape, that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. They'll try to hide it. If the university talks about it, then great. But other than that, it's just like, it's kind of weird. I don't know see. why you would want to, I mean, I get the, the sexual abuse if, you're, yeah. if you, you have enough power, but why would you want to hide a car crash? It's just a car crash. Like, it's, I, it's Irvine. Yeah. It, Cars it, crash there. I know. <laughs> but it, it goes beyond that. It's some sort, some sort of control to just keep the city at, like, a specific standard. Yeah. So I assume that they just have to do that. But that's not even the weird thing. The weird thing is, is that you, you almost want to know what these people look like, right? The people that work at the Irvine company. Because they've, they've been known to do some either, not shady things, but it's just like, why not tell us type of thing, mm -hmm. right? And <laughs> it's just like, we, we've made fun of it to an extent where it's just like, you know, there's like a mass shooting or whatever, mm. and like in Irvine, let's just say that, yeah. hypothetically. And... You know, the f first responders that are there are the Irvine company. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. You know what I mean? <laughs> we need to cover this up. Right? How do we cover this and up? And then the ambulance is in the background, you know? Like, oh my it's God. It's that type of thing. Like, that's just like how far we've taken it because we've heard so many stories about it. I think I know they have an incredible amount of power. I think I know somebody, like, I don't know them personally, but I've heard of 
one of the sons of somebody who owns part of the Irvine company Mm -hmm. has an incredible amount of power, like doing insane stuff on the road with like, you know, fast cars, all this, all that. Um, Okay. Just able to get out of all circumstances, even though this stuff is extremely illegal. Yeah. Um, So there definitely is shadiness going on. Yeah. We need to investigate the Irvine company. We do. It's it's local. So why not? You know, maybe make a documentary about it. The Irvine Company. Get ourselves Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this new island? <laughs> Keep in mind, we would never commit suicide. I hope you guys know that. Nope. If I have some sort of list, it's being released. Don't worry. True that. But yeah, what's been going on, dude? What's been happening? How's life? Chilling? Chilling. Chilling like a villain. Very nice. What is there to look forward to these days? In my personal life? Mm-hmm. Um... I'm probably going to, not probably, I'm, I'm going to switch teams, hopefully, so. Oh, very sick. So, wait, tell me how that is, actually. Is it like, um, like when you switch teams, what are some new things that you should be looking out for? Or, like, do you feel like there's something new here? Well, like yeah, new, just... new types of players or like. Oh, for sure. Um, new type of mentality with a coach. I don't know. I always come in respectful if I go into a new team, of course, Mm -hmm. uh, make sure that I get, I start off on a good foot foot. Yeah. Um, I've been with my other team for like four, five years, but I don't like the way it's going. Um, Mm. I'm not playing in the right position. I'm not playing enough. So make the switch over. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it calls for that and it looks like you're doing it. So that's good. That is very good. Change is always... Oh, necessary. dude, have you seen uh, the movie Bullet Train? I haven't, no. With Brad Pitt? Mm-mm. Amazing movie. I haven't I had yesterday. the time, bro. I'm so... I've been out of it, to be honest. Yeah. But um, is it actually that good? It's... it's it, dude, it's like a comedy, but it's also serious. It's also a, a thriller. It has violence. It's a good It looking? has a lot of gore. Really? And it also has, like, this deep philosophical underpinning throughout the entire movie that is just like well directed hmm. um all i will say is that it has to do with fate that's like the big um part of the movie interesting that they cover throughout the entire thing interesting because you don't get that from the trailer obviously mm-hmm. but i can assume because brad pitt's in it it's not going to be a disastrous movie no it was the next time i'm kind of glad that there was like some sort of comedy in it but i'm surprised that there's gore oh there's so dude like, like crazy a ridiculous killing. amount of gore Oh my god <laughs> swords you know, through heads like yeah. bleeding from the eyes damn nasty stuff so i should be watching this tonight then is what you're absolutely. saying absolutely hell yeah bro and there this was a star-studded cast as well it was like um what's the so we got michael B- shannon Mac- is okay. that his name michael shannon i don't know his i don't know name. anyways i don't, I don't i'm not good but, with actor names okay but basically this is just like a prestigious list of like people you know okay yeah gucci gucci was it too um, Asian in, cult- in culture or, like, in style? They weaved in, like, elements of Japanese culture and stuff, but not really. Not really? Okay. No. Cool. Because I don't like what they did with, like, uh, what, you know, directors did with uh, Shang-Chi or the writers or whatever. It was a little bit too Asian Oh, like, too, too many, like, um, yeah, what like, do you mean? The thing is, it's like, look, if you want someone to relate to something, you would have to be, it would have to be, like, like a general kind of lesson, right? That movie had a lot of like Asian sense to it. And I was like, I can grasp this, but I didn't grow up Asian, so I don't. Like something you would I don't really Japan feel or something? This, yeah, yeah. Oh. I don't really feel this right now. Whatever, yeah. whatever the bond is between yeah. family members or whatever, you know? Mm. There was something missing there. So when I saw Bullet, Bullet Train and I saw like, you know, um, just like more of an Asian style, I was like, oh God. I hope they don't ruin this because Brad Pitt's in it. And it wasn't like cringe humor. It was incredibly like witty adult type humor. Okay. I, I appreciate and that. And I really do. Yeah, I appreciate that as well. I do appreciate that. Because when it's like cringe, it's like, bro, what are, what are we doing? You spent $85 million to create this movie? Like Literally. Oh, man. Dude, I've been, uh, my perspective has been changing a lot lately. The perspective? Yeah, just the perspective on, like, um, not full perspective. I would say probably the perspective of approaching things. Um, 
think about this. Like, here's my train of thought. It's more like I wake up and you know what you want to do, right? And it's based on what? Some part of your identity, correct? Mm -hmm. So for the most part, I'm around cameras and I am a photographer. Let's just call it that. Okay. You're a graphic of photos. Yes. I remember there was once upon a time before I, w I was a photographer or a cinematographer or any of that sort. My approach for everything was weird. I would just try things. I wouldn't actually do them wholeheartedly. And what I mean by that is, let's say you want to pick up an instrument, right? You want to play guitar. My methods used to be, I want to learn how to play guitar. It wasn't, I wanted to be a musician. Yeah. Right. So you, in that sense, I didn't take it wholeheartedly or whole assed as we call it. <laughs> it's fascinating how much of a difference it would make within your journey in completing a task or learning something new, whatever it is. Right. In this case, it was practicing guitar. When I started being like, listen, I want to get into music theory and, and truly like actually become a musician from listening side to playing it, to singing it, to doing this. I think it's a good example just because generally most people like thinking about um, like, I want to play the piano or I want to do that. Mm. Right. And I took that concept and I started just doing that to pretty much everything. Like I, every layer that I had that was a part of my identity, I took it and I laid it out on the table and I'm like, how did I start doing that? Like, if I wanted to learn how to fix computers, what did I start doing? I started becoming more of a technician. I had to understand software. I had to understand how viruses are made, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Mm. And I realized that I actually went through that. It didn't just start one day where I was just like, I need to fix, um, I want to learn how to fix all kinds of computers. No, it started out with an issue on my computer. And that took me on a journey. And that journey showed me a whole bunch of spots I think I get what Where you mean. Like, like yeah, you're not like, focused on the small, not, yeah, and focused it, on just identifying as the entire thing. Yes. So it's weird because it follows the timeline of your life too, which is as you get older, you you are more usually about the long term game, right? You want to see yourself actually succeed, and you start looking more into the future, right? So it's it's just fascinating to me. I think that. It will always follow the timeline in accordance to your natural growth, but then also your subconscious growth. Like your subconscious is also growing and teaching you these methods. Like it makes you see, see clearer. So I'm not focused on doing homework. I'm becoming a student, you know? What have you learned the most from doing that just in general? Is that nothing comes easy. And if you want to be great at something, you got to expand on every single tab that it comes with. So, I mean, I think mm. the message today for me at least is don't, well, no, not don't. I would say don't focus on the thing you want to do. Rather ask yourself this thing that I want to do, what do I need to become for me to achieve that? Because that is a part of something. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of in line of like focus on the process yeah, rather than the and results. Yeah, and it helps you. Um, what I realize is you actually think about it rather than being like, oh, I want to play guitar to look cool. Mm -hmm. what, why don't you just be like, I want to learn music so that it becomes this like beneficial piece of me. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's more world understanding. And I feel like anything that sits on this earth is a worldview of some sort. Right, there's something to take out it's of it. It's like energy. Renaissance man type shit. Yeah. It's cool, dude. But like, other than that, I've also just been imagining like scouts, dude. Scouts back in the day. Barbarians. Scouts? What do you mean yeah. scouts? So back in the day, you know, you had your warriors. You had your Vikings. You had your spearmen. You had your army. Archers. All you that. had your, yeah, archers and all that, right? We had the scouts. The scouts, to me, are the cinematographers of back then. Because they would go and scout mm. for locations, areas, resources, gold. Primarily visual. Yeah. Yeah. So what I just described earlier reminds me a lot of the scout mentality. 
I can see that. Yeah. Hmm. So we help the scavengers. We help the, um, you know, we, we may get into trouble with barbarians, but what are barbarians in that sense, you know, in today's world? Soldiers, I guess. Maybe. That's yeah. probably the closest thing I could probably. think of. Base, yeah. Except soldiers are more like, you know, follow, in, follow, follow the line, don't sway from the rules. Mm -hmm. Barbarians are just pretty chaotic. Just doing whatever the hell they yeah, want. Yeah, they're all about the danger. They don't care. They don't care to live either. They're just like... <laughs> they're just axing here. fools. For honor that doesn't exist. For honor. Uh, That's interesting though, yeah. Yeah, but what the hell is that? Women's eggs? <laughs> so this... I, dude, <laughs> when I first found this, it was incredibly fascinating to me because I never really thought about this. Mm -hmm. Um... But this is what I call the intelligence of female biology. And I did not come up with this. This was from an account on Instagram that I found. Um, it's at Alba period so dot Arcadia. Um, and this is titled Women's Eggs Choose Which Sperm to Be Fertilized By. Huh. A fascinating journey into female biology. So I'm just going to go through this and I think everybody has this or most people have this has this misconception that the um, the sperm does all the work swims towards the egg right mm -hmm. and that the egg is more of a pass it has more of a passive role but this is about debunking the ovum passive sperm active myth. So did you know that there is no such thing as a sperm race? The, this hypothesis has been debunked for 70 years now. A paper from 1957 already confirmed that mammalian sperm do not have the energetic resources, resources or directional ability to travel under their own power to the site of conception. Mm -hmm. Conception is a female active, male passive process. Sperm are pretty incompetent when they make it to the female reproductive tract. They wouldn't be able to fertilize an, an oocyte even if immediate contact occurred. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Okay, sperm is pretty competent. Incompetent. Incompetent. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm like, sperm is competent. Hmm. <laughs> okay. In fact, the female reproductive tract regulates what happens with sperm and prepares them physiologically in order to make them capable to fuse with an ovum. So now we get into filtering and selecting. Um, let me see. I mean... Do you want me to explain all of these details, or do you just want me to like? Um, well, no, no, go back because I think it just it, it adds more. Yeah. So cervical fluid filters out sperm with poor morphology and motility, and only a minority actually enter the cervix. So there's this intelligence with the female body to where it just any sperm that doesn't meet the criteria mm -hmm. gone. This fluid changes its composition, shape, and texture around ovulation. One of its purposes being, along with muscular contractions, to guide and again filter the sperm into the uterus. Hmm. Female physiology also takes charge in the nourishment and capacitation of sperm, biochemically altering them so that they're able to get to the egg and allow conception to occur. Damn. It's, it's so sophisticated. Eggs choose the sperm. Out of the 250 million sperm, only a few hundred make it to the fertilization site. Okay. Some say as few as 250. Yeah. And on average, only about 10% of those few hundred are actually able to get to the egg to okay. fertilize it. But again, female nature is selective. And we know from recent research that in the last moment, literally the last two centimeters between the remaining sperm and the egg, the egg might or might not send chemical signals to attract the sperm. Mm-hmm. This choice does not only depend on the quality of the sperm, but also on whether they are found to be compatible or not by the ovum. So, at the end of the day, female biology is amazing. This whole idea of, like, our sperm racing with millions of other ones, it's false. Yeah. It's been debunked a long time ago. Interesting. And it's way more sophisticated than we'd like to imagine. That just goes to show you, like, the roles we play, female and male. Like, well, if the, I, like, if our sperm naturally does something, and then the egg naturally does something during times of ovulation or whatever. Isn't it fascinating that we have personalities, too? Like, people, right? Mm -hmm. And those personalities can slowly, like... If you really break them down and, and just remove the details of what happened in your actual life, right? And you just look at the core of a human, it follows 
that same type of like energy. It does. And this is the immediate thought that popped into my mind. You know, there, there's a saying that women are the gatekeepers to sex. So they get to choose which man has the opportunity to have sex with them. Yep. And men are the gatekeepers of relationships, mm -hmm. meaning men get to choose who they have a relationship with in terms of women. Yep. And many people still spreading their legs, counting 280 bodies plus. Yeah. Unfortunately, you that's know, a thing. And smiling about it, which is... But it's crazy because just in the context of women choosing which man to have sex with, yeah. based on so many things, and we know about pheromones, we know about, you know, there is something deeper in terms of attraction. Mm -hmm. It falls almost exactly in line with this hypothesis. Well, this fact that a woman's egg is actually in control of which sperm gets chosen, not the other way around. So we're not, yes, we it's like, just, even though we're called the sharpshooters, the sharp, the sharp, right? <laughs> yes. What you're saying is we got a sick ass goalie sitting there that gets to choose the goal. Pretty much. If you yeah. want to simplify it that way. Cool. Um, you like that? Say? <laughs> you like that metaphor? <laughs> I'm just thinking about scoring goals now. Yeah, but you... it, I, like I almost imagine it as like the egg has this gravitational force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like it's a magnet because, but I, it's magnetic to only like a certain type of like. Wait a second. The egg is dating. The egg is dating. The egg is dating. It's selecting. And it's selecting. That's crazy. Wait, wait, wait a second. So you're saying that eggs and sperm have a dating world, right? Mm -hmm. So they had a, a reservation for 250 million at Maggiano's. <laughs> <laughs> sure. And only 250 came. Only 250 are allowed yeah. inside the door. Exactly. But then, <laughs> but then, but then 185 of them went to the bathroom and never came back. So only 10% were eating dinner. No, not just that. They walk, all, all 250 walk through the door. They get to the, the reception desk or whatever the okay. fuck, where, whatever place you choose. And most of them are denied. They're kicked out. And only 10% of them are allowed inside to eat, so to speak. Okay. Okay. And then of that 10%, the egg chooses based on a whole different range of characteristics which one single sperm is allowed to be compatible with the egg ha huh. the chosen one the chosen one yeah and that's how you were born that's how i was born that's crazy bro like the egg has to be attracted to that sperm in some sort of way that's how i see it it's attraction Mm -hmm. So that follows, that's why I say when you're alive and, and as a person, right, we are attracted to things. Like, where does that come from? Why? Why do we attract? Well, you know, why how, are we attracted? you know how birds just know where to migrate? Yeah. And they automatically get into like a V shape mm -hmm. in the sky? Program. It's just intuitive. They just know. It's a program. And I think it's, a, yeah, it's a program. Everybody on this earth has a certain type of program. We're all defaulted at something. 100%, mm -hmm. right? That's why at the end of the day, what do people want in this world? What do you think? A few things, but I think probably love Just is... Just one. Love. Yeah. That's it. Love. To love and to be loved. Mm -hmm. That's literally it. You know? I don't know, man. I just thought this was incredible because yeah. like, we never dive into this sort of stuff. So. We don't. And it's like, it's cool because you get, every once in a while, it's nice to just be like, listen, let's take all the details out of a human. Let's just look at the core. Yeah. If that isn't fascinating to you, I think you have a lot of work to do on uh, the heart side, you know. And, and this is why, like, dude, let me, let me relate it to another example. Yeah. This is why this idea of men being disposable is a reality. This is why we send men to war and we cherish our women and children. Mm -hmm. All sense. those 250 million sperm, they're at war with each other, so to speak. And most of them are going to get axed. Yeah. But if you make it through. And that's why for most men, you're not going to feel like you have a place on this earth. But you do. You're in the air, bro. You're everywhere. You're Mr. Worldwide. Just swim to your egg, bro. Yeah. Just <laughs> swim to your egg. You'll find her. But anyway, if you found anything valuable in that episode, you know exactly where to find us because you're listening to it on that platform. Yes. Anyway, go ahead and click that five-star review button on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We would greatly appreciate that. Also, hit us up at 
YouTube on the 2AM on YouTube at the 2AM podcast. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss an episode. And we will catch you next time. Adios.